All right, guys, how's it going today? Um, doing maintenance today. I uh, wanted to uh, make a video for you guys here about um, how to uh, repack your uh, uh, trailer bearings. Let's get into it here. All right, guys, so um, I already did the uh, beginning work, which is pretty simple. Uh, getting your uh, trailer jacked up, make sure you got jack stands uh, for safety. Uh, take your wheels off, and then, it, and then you're gonna be looking at something like this on your brake drum. Um, so what you're gonna what we're gonna start with is we're gonna pop off this um, You just I'm gonna take a hammer and a punch and go all the way around it Okay, now they don't usually uh, come off that easy uh, usually you got to go around multiple times um, I, I already uh, uh, broke into that uh, yesterday to look at my grease see that water in there there, there was water inside of this hub. All right, guys, so for the next step, after you get off the outer cu cap, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this golden, golden uh, locking uh, nut keeper, and then we're gonna unscrew this nut behind it. And we're gonna pull the bearings out using the drum, and then um, it's basically all gonna fall off in, in one whole assembly, so I'll show you. All right, so you're gonna wanna take your little uh, pry bar, AKA screwdriver, just gonna, Get behind this golden keeper, go all around it. Try not to bend it or anything. It's pretty hard to do, but people do it. Okay, old crescent wrench here. You can see that nut right there. And this shouldn't be tight. Um, these are not tight at all. And just barely turn it. it. Starts to come off. Unscrew it by hand. Little washer here you can do it like that or, or you can have it all fall out if you want it's a little washer here grab this brake drum you're just going to pull it back a little bit like a kind of like a hammer okay bearings right here don't put rocks in the bearing like i almost just did okay here's your outer bearing now this whole brake drum is gonna fall off. The hub and everything, it's all one assembly, is gonna come off. Ugh. And then, ugh. there's your inner bearing. And then here is what the shaft looks like so you can see my seals are still good granted uh, you're gonna have to put in new seals because you're gonna destroy the seal so you are gonna have to get new seals make sure you do that before looking at the life on my brakes I still got plenty of life on the on the uh, shoes and I'm just gonna clean this off and uh, show you guys how to do that So a lot of people will just say you can use these quick certs. I would say that if you are somebody who doesn't do this for a living and uh, basically like uh, tows your RV around like maybe a thousand miles a year, go for it. Um, but if you do a lot of miles, like 50 to 60,000 miles on a trailer a year, um, I would not use these and every single time, ooh, that's chewed up away from using these the only time i use these quick certs is if i have a bearing that's getting hot on the road that's the only time i'll use them and i'll shoot in grease to get some fresh grease into those bearings but that's the only time um so uh, i that's yeah i always pull it apart and examine the bearings examine for damage like this if something's breaking apart it's better to know ahead of time instead of not know um, so, but that's me. So what we're going to do, we're, we're, we're going to take this over to the workbench and we're going to, uh, uh, pull the seal out and then we're going to, uh, get this, uh, get the old bearing out and, uh, we're going to clean everything up, repack them and put them back in. What you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to use, uh, preferably a seal puller. You can also use a, a crescent wrench, um, but you're going to want to pull this seal out. You are going to destroy this seal. Okay. You're going to damage it, and even if you didn't damage it, you want to replace it. So make sure you have new ones already purchased. Um, don't learn that lesson the hard way. So you're just going to get in here, get underneath it. Okay. 
can sometimes be a massive pain in the ass to get out. Well, that one came out easy. Just gonna pull it, and there's the old seal. Here's the old one, just throw that shit right in the trash. Now you're gonna pull the other bearing out. It should just come right out real easy. And there we go. You're just gonna wipe everything out. All right guys, so I totally realized uh, during the first video I made that I totally forgot how to show you the most important part of uh, uh, repacking the bearing and um, uh, reinstalling the bearing uh, into the hub on the uh, inside. So, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, yeah, I, I feel like an idiot. But anyway, so um, I would highly recommend using a uh, bearing packer. Um, uh, this one I have is full of uh, Lucas uh, Red and Tacky. I'm finishing it off. Whereas in the other uh, part of the video, I used Schaefer's 219. I would definitely recommend investing in a bearing packer. They're about uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks. Um, super simple. I would recommend using them with a vise. You can use them without a vise. It's just, it's, it's a brutal workout on your hands. Um, so definitely use them with a vise. So what you're going to do is you're going to put the bearing with the narrow end down. You're going to take the top part and you're obviously going to put your uh, 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 grease inside this uh, container. You're going to put this in. Screw it down till it's tight, till it spins. And you're literally just going to push. And then, if you watch, right through there, you'll start to see the grease ooze up and out. I'm just going to push down. Ugh. My workbench is not bolted to the floor, as you can probably tell. Now, you want to keep pushing until you see the grease in the bottom, like the, like the color of the grease in the bottom actually come out the top. It gets some serious suction on them, so they are terrible to pull out. That's why I'd recommend putting it in a vise. You can do it without a vise, but like I'm picking up the whole table right now. That suction pressure, like if you've ever had a five gallon bucket that gets stuck, it's like that on steroids. There we go. Once you start to hear air escaping, that's good. So. The trick is to kind of tip it or to kind of like to pull it to one side a little to try to get it air to let the air out as you pull. It, it is difficult regardless of how you do it. That took me like, I think three or four minutes. Grease and I actually uh, coat the rollers. A little bit of extra grease is always good. Make sure it's coated. The most important thing though guys is you got to get grease inside the actual bearing. If you just throw, if you clean the old grease off and throw new grease on it, it's not going to do anything. The actual grease needs to be in that groove. So that's what that bearing bearing packer does. It pushes grease through that. And then I just, for extra, I just coat the outsides. It doesn't hurt to have extra grease in there. It helps keep, keep the water out, which is really, really good. So that one's done. Now I'm gonna show you how to reinstall the uh, inner bearing and the seal. I'm gonna set it in there. It only goes in one way, you can't be it's pretty hard to mess that up. Two things. One, you wanna make sure you get no grease inside this drum, because this drum is where your brakes, your brakes actually push against this drum, and that's what stops the, the, uh, the, the, the trailer. That's what, that's what gets your braking. So make sure you get no grease outside this area. You want nothing in here that's not brake dust. Another thing, don't breathe any of that brake dust in because there's going to be a lot of brake shoe dust and all that stuff. Don't breathe any of that in. It's straight cancer. You're going to have to do a new seal um, on it. The old seal is going to be probably destroyed on removal. Um, almost guaranteed destroyed. But I'd always recommend to put in a new seal. I mean, they're cheap and it keeps your grease in and protects it. You put it like that. Don't do it like this. Do it like this. It's the way to do it. I would recommend getting a seal driver or a bearing driver. Uh, this one I have is actually a little too small. I'd go a little bigger, but it's the biggest one I got my, with me, my other ones in my other toolbox. You're gonna uh, persuade the seal in. Make sure you put your bearing in. Don't forget the bearing, because it really sucks and you gotta tear out your brand new seal that you just installed. And give her a little, a few uh, persuasion wax. 
So that one, the first hit, it kind of drove in this side, but not on the rear. So I'm going to move the, the, the driver over here. Okay. You want to try to drive it in as straight as possible. All right, that's in. Another method you can do if you don't have a driver is you can use a dead blow and you go around the outside. However, with this brake drum, there'd be no way to do it properly. It would be too difficult. So just, you want to hit it on the outside of the seal. Obviously you'd actually hit it, not like what I'm doing. Just don't hit it on the inside of the seal. You don't want to damage this seal and you don't want to bend this. So you just want to hit it around the outside, hit it till it's flush like it is right now. Um, but you, I would highly recommend spending the money for a seal driver. Uh, make sure that you get one that's big enough that the, the this one I have is too small in my opinion. I would want it to go cover the, the entire hole. Um, but for the ones I have right now with me, this is the biggest one I got. But it did work. You just have to be careful because you do run the chance of it actually uh, bending this seal. Because it's not hitting the whole seal. It's hitting like the inner, the inner part of the seal, which is actually where it's the weakest. Um... So just be cognizant of that, but th that's how you do it, guys. Guys, got the drum back over here. I'm just gonna slide this sucker back on. Take your uh, outer bearing, push that in, slides right in. Take your washer, it only goes on one way, it's a shape, put that on, you put your nut. Okay, now this is where the area of uh, debate takes place. So how I do it is I screw it down by hand, okay, I'll get it snug by hand, and I will actually rotate the hub, or the whole drum, and as I'm spinning, I'll tighten that down. Okay. Well, now you don't want to leave it that tight. And I, I did that to like uh, set the bearings. That's why I want to loosen this up because you don't want to leave it on tight because you'll burn the bearings up. Okay, so I, I get it back to hand tight. Here's your keeper. Now, this is kind of where you, this just uh, comes with time, but you also have to be able to align the keeper up. So right now, where it sits, I could actually put that keeper on, but it's a little, but the nut is loose. I, I, I always like to get it hand tight and I'll actually tighten it by hand. Then usually I go about, that's all I crank it. And then I see if the keeper lines up because this is where you kind of have to play the game. If the keeper lines up, you're good. Most of the time it will, um, but let's see. Put your keeper on, the keeper's on. Okay, now you that's how I do it. I, I do it hand tight and then I just kind of go a little bit like, I don't know, a sixteenth to an eighth of a turn. Make sure it still spins good. Make sure you're not like having to yank on it and you're good. Now, how I do it to know if it's too loose, if I can move the nut while the keeper's on, it's too loose, which I can't move the nut by hand while the keeper's on. So we're good. Last part, you just want to put your uh, cap back on. Inspect this, obviously. Um, you can see where, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see I've got little, if you can see it or not. You can see it, you see that? So that's from when I used this little screwdriver to get this off, and I actually, it didn't go through the metal, thankfully. Use something wider, make sure you have something that has a wide, wide head on it. Um, to avoid uh, damaging your caps and putting holes in your caps. You don't want holes in your caps, obviously. Uh, cap on her. Take the hammer. Dead blow. And you're done. All right, guys, that's going to sum it up. I got the other uh, three uh, hubs to do. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please shoot me a like and a subscribe. If you have any comments or questions or anything like that, please don't hesitate to ask. Make sure when you do this though, one of a big important thing is not only make sure that you have your seals already for your uh, inner bearing, but make sure that you use the proper grease. Um, not all grease is, re is, is rated for wheel bearings. 
Uh, make sure you get wheel bearing rated grease. I'm getting a uh, bearing packer uh, like what I used. Um, it gives you a much better pack. It's not necessarily quicker, um, but it does give you a much better uh, pack for your bearings. Um, but anyways, guys, once again, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more Hot Shot content. Thank you.